One of my more notable cosplays is probably my Vi cosplay from League of Legends. I feel like my misfortune costume. A gender bend of Morgana. My Vi was the one that like most people know me for. Garen was the, my favorite. I've done so many League champions and like for me to pick which one I've had the most fun in, like I, I don't think it would be possible. Some fans play the game for hours, some attend every event, some collect their favorite characters, and some fans become them. Cosplay isn't just about dressing up. It's a proclamation of your love for a fandom and an opportunity to connect and bond with people like you. Today we're talking to some of the best League of Legends cosplayers about what fuels their passion for their craft and inspires them to push their creativity to the max. Characters that like really inspire me to cosplay them are like basically badass women. Dresses with armor or like hyper armor and then like some frills. Like that's like my aesthetic. League of Legends does that very well and I'm like, okay, you cosplay. <laughs> Even though the designs are simple at times, they're still bold and dynamic and colorful and I love that. I have a gang of friends that we always play ARAMs together and like Garen is like my man. I saw the cinematic trailer and I said like, that, let's do it and it's gonna be easy because there's no compound curves. And that's where I learned to never say that's gonna be easy, because then I realized he had like three layers of trim. You have like the base plate, and then you have your trim, and then the trim has two pairs of trim on it. So it's like, okay, so I just made this armor like four times. Every time I make a costume, there's a there's that part where you say, say curse my hubris. There's a lot of research I put into what I wanna do. Like, all right, cool. Uh, this is uh, not realistic for this outfit. Uh, you're gonna have to go to the bathroom at some point. So we're gonna have to put some zippers in here. I love straight stitching lines. Like look at how straight I got this little stitch in the ditch right here. And everybody's like, damn, that's sexy. That's a nice stitch. That looks real good. <laughs> Every new thing we try to learn a new technique or to enhance the old ones to get just a little bit closer to perfection. People in my stream know me as like the sand queen because I just 3D print stuff and then I have to sit there and sand it forever and ever. Practically crying on stream because I was in so much pain. Putting a cosplay on for the first time when you've worked blood, sweat, and tears into it, like, it's it's incredible. With Garen, I'm like in armor, I'm like, like oh, I'm awesome, look at me, I'm so cool, I work so damn hard. And then Nidalee, I'm like not wearing anything. But this the same feelings there, I'm like, oh, I'm awesome, I got so shredded and I ate like nothing but chicken and sadness for three months. Freaking look at me! It's so good. Like, it's a high I will never get over. You just, you look at yourself and you're like, I did it, like, I am this character now. When you inhabit the character, a little bit of the character bleeds in to who you are. And at least for me, that manifested itself in a lot of confidence. And I genuinely want everyone to experience that and to have that, that sort of like Hollywood star for a day feeling to kind of carry that in their lives. Like, oh, you know what? I, I am worth something. I notice that when I'm in a costume, I'm way more just social and stuff. Like I'm not myself. You get to be somebody else for a day. I cosplayed Arcade Sona at Season 2 Worlds, and I made an et wall that had pre-programmed responses. And it was so cool, like having people come up to me talking, and then I would talk to them through my et wall, and they're like, wait a second, Sona's mute, you're being mute. A lot of people are, have such deep connections with their characters and their favorite champions, and when you're able to bring that to life for them, they just get so overwhelmed and they love it. And I love it when people come up to me and they're like, this is my favorite character. Can I please take a million selfies with you? My Wicked Lulu hat, I had a tutorial online and apparently it like helped so many people out in the community. Like I'd go to a random con and people would be like, hey, are you Venzi? I used your hat tutorial. Thank you so much. No matter what con you go to, you could always find somebody who's also cosplaying League, so you're not alone. In 2012, at Anime Expo, I wanted to keep in touch with all the other League of Legends cosplayers, so I made the League of Legends cosplayers group. Uh, at the beginning, I would like invite 20 people to my dorm, and we would have a crafting day. Convention by convention, year by year, more people are doing it, and there's over 18,000 people as of today, and it's just a global community now of crafters and people making things. 
my favorite thing of all time with League of Legends cosplay. On Reddit, we found a thread from this guy from Canada saying, hi, Reddit, I really want to cosplay. Can somebody help me? He goes by the Arion, this is his summoner name, and he has muscular dystrophy and he's in an electric wheelchair. He plays actually League of Legends with his mouth and his feet and he wanted to be quirky because he's like, all my life I wanted to cosplay. I physically can't uh, and people stare at me for being in a wheelchair and he's like so I want people to stare at me for being a really cool character and Corky is my main. So I reached out to my friend Brett who is the leader of a cosplay group called 4 H Tasty. We raised almost four thousand dollars to make the costume. We filmed the whole thing where we put him in the costume, we revealed it to him. He was super emotional. The people at Riot loved it. He like stole in my opinion worlds. I like think of cosplay and think of like this is something that's so powerful and amazing that I was able to be a part of. This is like way bigger than us. This is something that's really special. The cool thing is like all my experience through cosplay has actually led me to like building businesses. My Venzi Props business is where I'm making just like blueprints and like 3D model files for people. I make like pet apparel and accessories. There would be a time when I would stop cosplaying for sure. I think I would still make things either for other people or hell, even my like my kids, maybe my grandkids. Probably not forever, but for the foreseeable future until we can't walk anymore, until we are too old to do it. There's characters that I want to do that are, you know, in their late 50s, and there's like old ladies that are like in their 80s, and I'm like, oh, frick, when I get wrinkles, I want to do that. <laughs> Year-over-year, esports events are getting bigger and better. In the next episode of this series, we're going behind the scenes at Riot Games' LCS Studio to uncover all that goes into putting on one of the most ambitious productions in esports.